In watching this Miami Hurricanes football team over the past couple of years, I've got to think that the Canes have much better than six-win talents. I also know that they don't quite have 12-win talents, and that's where they want to be in that range. So we bring in Cam Underwood to talk about this current recruiting class as we are just about five days away from National Signing Day. Cam, we appreciate the time as always. Uh, let's start with the uh, big commits uh, that have come into the fold thus far, and who's really got you amped up at this point? Um, well, first of all, you know, thanks for having me. Always a, a pleasure to be around. Uh, we'll jump right into it. Yeah, we have uh, a couple of guys who uh, are really exciting uh, players. Um, the first two both play running back. We have Jordan Scarlett from St. Thomas Aquinas High School, a U.S. Army All-American, um, 5'11", 210 pounds. He's chiseled. I've seen him at uh, some local events walking around in a T-shirt, and it looks like he kind of put two little uh, bean bags under for his traps because he's massive. Uh, for a kid that plays running back. So he's a really good kid. Uh, so he's our top-rated recruit uh, commitment right now. Uh, our second or third top uh, commit is Mark Walton from Booker T. Washington High School. Um, he's also a very chiseled guy. He's not as big physically as um, Jordan Scarlett is, but um, a lot of people who've seen him play have said that he was always the best player on the field uh, ever since Optimus to now. Um, so he's a, a supremely talented kid. Um, there's a couple of highlights that he had in the state championship game against uh, Jacksonville Bowls, and he had a couple of cutback runs that, honestly, you just watched it and you just started laughing because they were ridiculously amazing. Um, so uh, those two guys at that position uh, would lead the list. Um, and then there's just a smattering of other guys. Uh, at defensive back, Jaquan Johnson um, from Miami Killian High School, he's already actually on campus. He's an early enrollee. Uh, but he was a four-time all, a first four-time first-team All Dade County selection. Um, and if you follow recruiting, and I guess you do if you're watching this podcast, um, that is a rare honor to even as a you know freshman or sophomore be mentioned for second or third team, let alone first team for four years. Uh, so he is somebody that Miami fans are very very excited about. Uh, his nickname is the franchise, and we hope that he can be that for us. Um, Outside of that, personally, my favorite recruit uh, on the offensive side is wide receiver Terrell Chapman uh, from Louisiana, Baton Rouge Central High School. Um, he's a freak. He's six foot three, 190 pounds. He can run, you know, a four four forty. He can jump a forty inch vertical. He's also a basketball player. Um, he had, I believe, the Max Preps Play of the Year. This nasty one handed diving uh, uh, touchdown against double coverage in the end zone. Um, so. Uh, he's a, a top recruit. Um, outside of that, I'm trying to rack my brain, defensive line, don't have – I mean, we have some good guys, but nobody that's right at the top, top. Uh, offensive line, Barmillo, who was Brad Kaya's high school teammate, is following him across country to Miami. He's a four-star kid. Also, Tyree St. Louis from IMG Academy in Bradenton, another four-star offensive tackle. Those guys are very good. Um and I think that that, yeah, that's going to do it for the top guys. Yeah, you've got six guys listed here who are rated in their top 20 at their position. And you mentioned uh, St. Louis at uh, number nine. Uh, sounds like you really like uh, Jaquan Johnson listed as an athlete, but he's going to play cornerback, you say? Uh, he's going to play safety, maybe a little bit of slot corner. Um, but, I mean, you know, kind of the high school mode where he's the best athlete on the field, so he plays everything on the field, uh, even at the largest classification in Florida. But he's going to be a defensive back all the way. Um, he's going to have a role as a freshman this upcoming year. And, I mean, I've seen him play a couple of times in person in high school, and he will not – he doesn't wow you because he's not the biggest guy. He's not the strongest guy. He's not the fastest guy. But – if you look at the definition of football player and instincts, that's Jaquan Johnson for both of them. Chapman is at number 30. You really like him. Number 30 at wide receiver, according to ESPN. And you've got the two running backs, Scarlett and Walton. You mentioned them both in the top 13, according to ESPN, at uh, running back position. So those are the guys that are firmly entrenched, it appears firm to their commitments. Who are those guys that uh, are talking about three, four, five different schools that you would love to see choose the U? Well, there, there's a long list for this one because, um, you know, we've had, as every school does, you know, you have some movement coming towards signing day. So uh, we're hopping on a couple of guys and trying to see if that can, uh, you know, we can persuade them to become hurricanes. So um, 
just a quick rundown at quarterback. We have uh, Torrance Gibson from American Heritage. Um, they list him as a dual threat. Me, myself, personally, I've said it before. I'm saying it again. I don't think he's a quarterback. I think that he's a wide receiver. I think that he is three years and a first-round draft pick at wide receiver. Um, I saw him at uh, live competition, uh, both actual games and combines, uh, and I've always thought that he's uh, uh, an amazing athlete, six foot four, two hundred and seven pounds, runs a four five forty, is a natural pass catcher, um, and on every field that he's played on in high school, he's the best athlete on the field. And I'm talking when he was a sophomore versus senior recruits, as a junior versus senior recruits, and as a senior versus other seniors and juniors, he's the best athlete on the field every single time. Um, and he really wants to play quarterback, so he's saying, I only listen to you if you want to recruit me as a quarterback. But his athleticism and potential pretty much anywhere, if you want to put him at safety, wide receiver, blow him up, you know, 20 pounds, put him at tight end, even though he won't do that. But he could do that and be successful. So his talent is such that he can dictate where he wants to play. And to start with, at least he wants the opportunity to play quarterback. So I'll give that to him. And apparently our, the Miami coaches uh, feel the same way because he's coming in for an official visit uh, actually tomorrow and this weekend, um, and he's committed to Urban Myers School um, in the state south of Michigan that I don't like to talk about. So that's one. Also, Lamar Jackson from Boynton Beach, he's committed to Louisville, I believe, or was, and he just took an official visit today. And Miami coaches just visited him on Tuesday. So that's kicked up very quickly. And both of those guys, their recruitment is kicked up because uh, the quarterback we had in this class, Dwayne Lawson, decided that he wanted to flip to Virginia Tech. So we're kind of looking at those guys. Um, outside of Jackson and Gibson, um, we have coming in Dalen Charlotte. Charlotte, I don't know, actually know how to say his last name. He's a wide receiver from Louisiana. Probably going to go to Alabama, but he has an official visit to Miami this weekend. So, you know, we're going to shoot our shot and take our chance. Uh, outside of that, we have offensive linemen uh, and defensive tackle Kendrick Norton from Jacksonville Trinity. Um, he's probably trending towards Miami. Uh, he's looking at Florida and a couple other schools also. But uh, everything that has been said and that we're hearing is saying that he's probably leaning towards Miami. But there's a multiple offer situation. Uh, Mohamed Berry is an outside linebacker from Georgia. Uh, he is committed to Kansas State, and as we're talking on this podcast right now, he's waiting for his mom to get home to announce where he's going to college. So uh, it could be Miami, it could be Nebraska, it could be staying with K-State, which nobody really sees, but one of those three things, so looking at him. Also, um, let's see, well, teammates from Los Angeles, uh, California, you have five stars, uh, the defensive tackle Rasheem Green and five-star outside linebacker John Houston, both of them from uh, Junipero Serra Catholic School. Um, they visited earlier for the Florida State game weekend. They, that was their official visit, and uh, we're in with them. Houston is probably going to USC like 100% done, so I don't really consider us involved with him. Rasheem Green, however, continues to reiterate that all four of his finalists, uh, Arizona State, USC, Miami, and Oregon, are on equal ground. I mean, he's visited all of those places, and he keeps saying they're on equal ground. So even though I might personally think that he's leaning towards USC, he keeps saying that everybody's equal. So, you know, maybe there's a chance. Um, also from L.A., defensive tackle Kevin Scott. Uh, he was a late-rising player. He was a basketball player up until this year. Uh, plays defensive tackle, 6'5", 280 pounds, had like 80 tackles and 20 sacks as a senior in high school. And after the season, his recruitment is completely blown up. Um, our coaches flew out Al Golden and uh, a couple other guys. I think it was D'Onofrio and Franklin, the defensive coordinator, defensive line coach. On the very first day after the dead period ended, we went to go see John Houston, Rashid Team Green, and then Kevin Scott, a three-star kid. Um, so we really like him. Brought him in last week for an official visit. Um, and, you know, we're definitely in a head-to-head -head with USC for him because they're looking to bring in defensive tackles, just like I was talking about with Rashid Green. Um, maybe, hopefully, uh, Antonio Callaway, wide receiver from Booker T. Washington. His teammate, excuse me, Devontae Davis, a cornerback uh, from Booker T. Washington. Both of those are teammates of previously mentioned commit uh, Mark Walton. So maybe those guys will come over. Um, and I'm sure that there's probably somebody that I'm forgetting, but, you know, we're five days, six days from National Signing Day and all the targets are moving.
Yeah, after these videos, I usually scan them to come up with name tags that I can include with the uh, the video post, and you've definitely listed enough people to keep me busy for a while there. <laughs> Great rundown there, Cam. Uh, as, as it goes for Gibson, I'm not going to name the school up north or south of Michigan, but uh, it, it would seem to be you don't have to be a brain surgeon to realize that uh, that's not the school for him if he wants to play quarterback. Well, you know, I don't necessarily agree with that. Okay. Uh, well, and okay, for full disclosure, even though I'm a native Michigander and there's the big house, University of Michigan State, and behind my head, I will say the name of the school, and I hate it, Ohio State. Um, that's where Torrance Gibson is committed. And, um, you know, people say now, okay, this is not necessarily where the place for him if he wants to play quarterback. I think that, honestly, and I wrote this over the summer, he's left-handed Terrell Pryor at quarterback. The thing about that is left-handed Terrell Pryor, just like regular Terrell Pryor, has a ceiling, and his ceiling is winning some games in college. Okay, And this kid's athletic talent, just like Terrell Pryor's, was so great that if he goes to a position where he can maximize that talent more than at quarterback, he can be a superstar. Okay, um, Now, with the returning depth chart at Ohio State, and I'm going to make this quick because I know it's a Miami thing and I went to Miami there. But with the returning depth chart there, he's not going to see the field anytime soon because you've got three guys who played and won games and done very, very well, Big Ten Player of the Week, such and such and such and such. So he's going to not see the field early. I mean, and I'm talking a year, maybe two, maybe even two and a half, three years at that position at that school. Also, taking into fact the offensive coordinator slash QB coach, Tom Herman, is now the coach at Houston. So the player who's mo or the guy who's molded these quarterbacks is no longer there. So you're moving all these pieces at the same time with three guys in front of you, and the coach is gone. Now that maybe opens up the fact that he's saying, okay, maybe Miami could be that spot because it's close to home. They're gonna run. Um, we run a you know up tempo kind of pro spread hybrid thing. So you know I can throw what I do and run what I do. Um, maybe I'll go to Auburn and be you know the upgrade to. Nick Marshall uh, there with that kind of spread-based scheme. So I I don't know. I mean, you could make the argument that he could fit at any of those places because he does have that kind of talent. But, yeah, I don't necessarily think that there's one particular great landing spot for him. But if they're all equal, Miami's a good spot. That's all I'm saying. Well, it's a good spot, except you've got a really great young quarterback in Brad Kaya. Yeah. But everybody's, everybody that's decent out there has quarterbacks that can play. So he's going to have to beat out somebody, and it looks like he's going to be able to do that. But as you mentioned, he has his heart set on playing the quarterback position. So if you look at the uh, 13 games that were played last year, Cam, and you look at this uh, incoming talent, uh, where are the needs? So where can some of these guys get significant playing time right away? Um, well, like you said, we do have freshman All-American Brad Kaya. Um, at quarterback, so the immediate playing time, and I'm knocking on my wooden table, absent of injury, is not there um, at quarterback. Um, Scarlett and Walton, they're going to come and contribute at running back. Uh, we do have Joseph Dearby, Gus Edwards, and Trayon Gray there also, so there'll be five uh, very talented backs, but there's playing time to be had there. Um, between Chapman and U.S. Army All-American Lawrence Cager, who are the currently committed wide receivers. I see one of them maybe coming in and playing uh, as a true freshman. We have six offensive linemen currently uh, committed, and we're after another one as well. So we could have six or seven come in, uh, and that's for depth. And we've played a rotational offensive line system, so not necessarily just you know the five guys set it and forget it and only switch for injuries. Uh, we do rotate guys in for di different drives. So you'll see, uh, you know, a Trevor Darling who was a freshman. He's rotating in on a regular basis. Casey McDermott until he tore his knee up. Same kind of thing. So I think that, you know, one or two of those guys can find the field. Obviously, um, it's the defensive tackle position uh, where we are still trying to find that game-changing player uh, in coming into year five of the Al Golden regime here in Miami. So that's really the place where you know, we're after Kevin Scott, we're after Kendrick Norton, we're after Rasheem Green. Um, I should have probably said Green first because he's the best player of those three. But, you know, we're really trying to hammer that position. Um, pass rusher on the edge, we're after a couple of guys there too because we don't have guys whose singular talent is getting to the quarterback. Um, and we need to, to find some guys with that. So definitely defensive line inside and out. Uh, and also linebacker. Um, we've lost Denzel Perryman, uh, who was a great 
player. He was the runner-up for the Buckets Award for Best Linebacker in America this past season. Uh, Thurston Armbrister started every game last year um, at outside backer. He's gone. In addition to that, uh, we had two gentlemen kicked off the team uh, and kicked out of school for a sexual assault incident uh, in the summer. And so obviously that needed to happen. Um, but in the aftermath of that, now you take into account that's four guys down, especially with two of those guys, the guys who got kicked out of school, who would still be around this year. So the depth is really uh, getting to be thin at linebacker, so much so that we took a safety, Marcus Gayo, from last year's recruiting, cla uh, recruiting class, and we moved him down to outside backer. Um, so we're trying to do everything we can there. Uh, we do have two guys committed. Charles Perry is already on campus. He was committed since the spring of his sophomore year of high school, so the longest tenured commit for this class. Also, Jamie Gordinier uh, from New Jersey. He goes to Red Bank Catholic, which I believe is Al Golden's personal alma mater. So there's that New Jersey connection. So we have a couple guys there, uh, and we could definitely use more. And then at the defensive back positions, we do have uh, Michael Jackson, that's his real name, uh, from Spain Park High School in Alabama. He's committed at corner. I already talked about Jaquan Johnson. I feel like I'm forgetting somebody else, and I feel really bad about that because I usually don't forget anybody, but I think we have another. Oh, Robert Knowles. Uh, he's an underrated kid because of his grades. He was very under-recruited, but he's gotten his grades together. He's a, uh, a sleeper, but he's a stud. So we got those three guys, but we could use another cornerback. So Marcus Lewis. Um, who I probably should have mentioned earlier, is a multiple offer competition thing. He's um, announcing on Tuesday between uh, Miami and Kentucky. He's a Under Armour All-American four-star recruit. Um, so we could use him. We could use Devontae Davis from Booker T. Washington, who I mentioned earlier. We could use a number of players. Um, but, yeah, basically you're talking about running back, maybe a little bit of receiver, a little bit of offensive line, and every single position on defense. Well, this will be another top 15 to top 20 class, Cam, as you well know. So we are expecting the wins to follow. Well, you know, that's uh, that's the thing. And I think that uh, right now we're ranked 21st in America uh, on our recruiting class. I was just looking it up on 24-7 sports uh, earlier today. And with even a couple of those guys, we'll elevate. So we'll be in that, you know, 10 to 15 range uh, with talent uh, incoming this year. Last year's class was really great with, you know, five-star Chad Thomas, five-star Casey McDermott. Um, and then, so the incoming guys are good, and then you look at the outgoing guys. Philip Dorsett was uncoverable at the, um, sorry, senior bowl practices. Clive Walford was uncoverable. Uh, Denzel Perryman was making hits everywhere he went. Anthony Ciccolo at the Shrine game, he played really well. Ladarius Gunn, all these guys who are leaving, they're all of a sudden, you know, the NFL guys are looking at them like, wow, like I'm considering, you know, Duke Johnson as a borderline first round draft pick. Now he's an all time leading rusher in Miami Hurricanes history. So yeah, but I wasn't necessarily considering a Ladarius Gunner, but now I see him play great man to man coverage. He's six foot one, 205 pounds. I'm looking at him second, third round. Now I'm looking at Philip Dorsett and he runs a four, two flat and he's catching everything. He's making catches going over the middle and he's only five, eight, 185 pounds. You know, but he's doing things that I didn't necessarily know he could do. So he has the skills, and we're coaching them to have the skills when they leave, and we're bringing them in as talented guys. But that middle part of winning games now is the thing that we need to look at. So, you know, hopefully um, there are some kind – there is some kind of progression uh, with the, the, the development and the, the performance on campus. So hopefully we can start turning some of these recruiting uh, wins into actual tangible victories when we play the game of football. He is Cam Underwood of the State of the U on the SB Nation platform. He fills us in on Miami with all sorts of uh, previews and recaps, and when it comes to signing day, he's all over it, as you can well hear. Cam, thanks so much for joining us, as always. No problem, Mark. Thanks for having me. See you later.